Ladies and gentlemen, it is a weird, wild world out there, folks. And here we stand, al pie del cañón. I'm Rob, that's a notch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to The Provo Show uh, live. It's currently 8.30 Central European time for my international friends. How are you doing out there? And we joined in the studio with Mr. Richard Vaughn. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. I just finished... Talking about Turkey and Syria and with <laughs> Olga. What a wonderful woman. She needs to improve her English, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> she uh, she speaks well enough to to uh, solve to help to solve the problems, solve problems yeah. and things like that. Okay, so today um, we're going to we're changing the schedule somewhat. So the usual um, the usual activities we do on the show. We're not going to be doing. We'll do them tomorrow. Yesterday I posted an unpopular opinion, and we will use that. For um, for tomorrow's show, instead, instead, what we're going to do is Richard and I are going to have a discussion um, on a specific topic. He's just left the studio. If you can see, he's walking there behind. We're gonna we're gonna have a discussion on a on a um, on a specific topic. Something, um, something that is is oddly um, oddly controversial. I would say. I mean, I posted on my social media last night that I was going to have a discussion this morning with Richard Vaughn on the theme of what does it mean to be a man? <laughs> <laughs> and I posted this on social media, Richard. I got I got so many responses that I couldn't um, reply to them all. So we're going to go over a few of them right now before we get started. Okay, here we go. Um, I won't mention any names, although I could. I don't know how... Um, uh, there were some ideas that I didn't post, though, were a little bit touchy. Okay, here was one. Um, being a man is about seeking wisdom, learning from experience, and passing on that knowledge. Well, that's a woman, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what does it mean to be a man? I think the concept is a little old-fashioned. That was from our friend Nessa. Interesting. We'll so get. It. I'm old-fashioned, I guess. Well, it's, it's normal. I'm we'll in the aut- I'm in the autumn of the year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into it in a little bit. But this is what makes this conversation fascinating. Right, because it has become somewhat of a touch. It's it become somewhat of a raw nerve in society. I want to touch on that. Um, I think a man should be responsible and provide stability for himself and his family. That was another one. Um, it's time to redefine masculinity and strive for equality and inclusivity for all genders. Um, another one. To me, being a man means being strong and not giving up when the going gets tough. Knowledge without pride and pride without attitude. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, oh, boy, that's a loaded question. That was another <laughs> reply. Is it to be dirty and smelly? Well, these that's people, someone who knows me personally. I these people speak English very well or write very well. Yeah, the majority of my audience are not in Spain. Okay. okay. <laughs> At least uh, <laughs> the majority of the people who um, interact with me on social media. But a lot of these are from Spaniards, eh? Um, oh, as what this is from um, a Spanish gentleman, I think it was Jose. As Walter White would say, a man provides. Mm-hmm. Um, another one: being a man is an expression of noble attitudes, principles, and good morals. A male is different from a man. That was a, another one from a Spanish um, gentleman. Um, to be honest, make people around you feel better, and of course, have masculinity. Masculinity is a loaded term, I think. Now, this is something I've um, uh, I've meditated on for quite a while, and really? for several yeah for several <laughs> for several reasons. Now, I, I I haven't I haven't meditated on this. Oh God, I have, <laughs> and I'll tell you I'll tell you for why, because I find I find what it the the idea of what it means to be a man and masculinity in general to be such a nebulous thing, so so indefinable, especially today, much more than it was in the past. But it's something that's changed. And it changes depending on social situations, social group, socioeconomics. For example, right, if you were to ask my grandfather, my grandfather was a Polish immigrant born in the 20s. Um, for him, I think if I were to ask him to be a man would, um, would mirror what some of the comments there said. And there were a lot more, but I don't have time to, to read them all. He would have said, yeah, something along the lines of a man provides, right? Mm-hmm. It was, um, if, if, he, if he could see me now in my mid-40s without a family, you know, not owning a house. He would be disappointed. He would consider it, yeah, or maybe a lack of what he would consider, you know, what it is to be a man, you know? And then um, throughout my adolescence, being a man meant something completely different because of the, the socioeconomic 
situation in Bradford at the time, the decline in the industri of, of industry in Bradford and the rise of um, the service industry um, led to a lot of poverty. Being a man out there um, during my teens was very much about, you know, going out, getting drunk, mm -hmm. um, meeting um, our, our Meeting a lot of women, let's put it that way. Um, if you, uh, you know, your 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 tolerance to alcohol, um, fighting, being the toughest, that was what it meant to be a man. And well, and in that case, it's more like an adolescent. You're in the middle of the testosterone. <laughs> I high. think you, if you've travelled to Bradford now and met people, or even around my age, you'd find very little difference. Between you and the others? No, no, no. Between uh, between that a attitude of what you'd consider adolescence. Ah, uh, there's still adolescence. Well, yeah. I mean, look, uh, um, uh, in I think, it, well, not exclusively in Bradford. I think um, uh, like a tolerance towards alcohol and toughness. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at look. For example, like, have you ever heard of the poem um, "Bluebird" by Charles Bukowski? No. Well, we'll, we'll maybe read that later on on air. So yeah, um, there are certain things. Um, uh, there are certain things. It's hard to define what being a man is, and I think even today, I think today more than ever, being a man has come to mean, or what we consider masculinity, or what we consider defines us as men, has been eroded to the point where it means very little. However, we, there are there are people out there. There are people out there that that do look for meaning, and they land upon kind of more toxic victimizing ideas for example like andrew tate someone we spoke to, spoke about yesterday yeah i wouldn't consider him a paragon of manhood you know what i mean mm -hmm. i wouldn't consider him a paragon of manhood in the slightest i think that that kind of that kind of rhetoric that poses men against women is not a great it's it's not a great meditation of what it means to be a man you know what i mean because i think to be i think I think there is no I think there is no defining quality. Although there are kind of common threads, there's no defining quality which mean which kind of leads me down the rabbit hole of being a man actually means nothing. I think with the affluent societies we live in today, we have too much time to think and and you you talk talk this subject to death. I'm a guy. I'm a man. I'm sorry. I, I have <laughs> testosterone more than estrogen. And yeah, I'll look after my family. If I have a family, it's a responsibility. I mean, <clears throat> I, I'm stoic to yeah. a certain extent, you know. And um, Well, in some degrees, I someone say, would say that's a masculine quality, a certain amount of emotional stoicism. Well, it's a good feminine quality, in my opinion, as well. Although I, I like I'd, to be too emotional in this world. You know, to show emotions is great, but to be too emotional and not to be able to control your emotions, you uh, you uh, are allowing yourself perhaps to be invaded by others or to lose in many of the uh, uh, interactions that you would have. You need to st you need strength. Women need to be strong in their approach, and men need to be strong. Strength weakness is will take us in the wrong direction everywhere, and so. Uh, you know, masculinity, what, what it is to be a man. I, it's just to be a person who has strength of character and responsibility. Again. And integrity uh, in their person. <clears throat> but again, that is something they would say about a woman, right? Of course. The same thing. So let's um, let's take a, a quick look at the chat. We've got Pedro from Instagram joining us. We've got JC joining us. We've got Nessa Vanessa. How are you doing? And The Bridge. Welcome, welcome, guys. That's what I meant by with my comment. It is old-fashioned. It is old-fashioned, Nessa, but... I think we in um, mm, I, I uh, I'm lucky enough to see a real contrast from the life I live in Madrid and the people I associate with in Madrid. And then when I went home to England this year, it was a very harsh reminder of the fact that um, my relatively um, my relatively liberal views on masculinity um, are not I would absolutely not be shared out there. So it's a in, in Bradford, yeah, yeah, in UK. It's a community that still struggles with quite a lot of poverty, um, mm -hmm. violence, and whatnot. Um, and 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 people like Andrew Tate, for example, for, uh, these <laughs> these these masculine commentators, um, they have risen to fame not because not because they're um, uh, what they're saying is right, because I, I think it's much more because there is a vacuum. But the fact that they have risen to fame, he's just one of many. Mm. Why? 
because there's a vacuum. Okay, there, I think so there's, there's something. A, yeah, I think there's a there's a lack of male voices encouraging <laughs> encouraging men to be a little more a little bit more. Oof, how do I put this? Are you well, okay, say- here we go. A little bit more in touch with their their feminine attributes. Here's something. <laughs> here's um. Here's here's a, a really interesting point that um. Natch once made. Uh, we were in the um, uh, Natch. We, yeah, yeah. This, this, this Natch. <laughs> so we were in the um, in the radio control. I was working on something. He was working on something. And I asked him. I said, Natch, give me. Um, uh, we were talking about toxic masculinity in in the show that day. And I said, Natch, give me um, uh, give me an example of positive masculinity. And there are there are you know there are a few assertiveness, for example. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything you take to an extreme, right? And it can be a detriment. And he said to me something that I found <coughs> fascinating. He said, it's the qualities we tend to think, we tend to associate with the op- the other gender that we associate with, that we, we find um, attractive qualities in our, in, in that gender. For example, like I personally, if I'm looking for a partner, I'm looking for a very assertive, powerful woman. That's what I like. It's my thing. You ask a woman, like, what kind of a man are you looking for? She might say, well, I want him to be sensitive. I want him. Do you know but what they I'm they don't, saying? usually. I think they do. No. They want an, they want a good master. <laughs> I don't think so. Un bueno. <laughs> yes, they do. I mean, look. Again, again. I, deep down, look, just... You go to the book st- sections and you see that there are these romance novels. Yeah. You know, Pasión Bajo los Olmos, you know, and these, the Passion Under the Elms and these. They devour these books. You know, the, the number one author in Spain is Megan Maxwell. Mm-hmm. And her, her real name is Josefina, and, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But she's the number one. She sold more books than Perez Roberti or anybody else. And you know what it's called? passion under the elms i think and- here we're talking about a very <clears throat> slim section of of women and i'll tell you why because if you tune into discovery max right now you're going to see you're going to see start, you're going to see it's it, it even claims itself to be a tv channel for men right um, well this is it discovery max i think so <laughs> and on there you will see shows about fishing gold mining um show, shows about yeah. um, being a, a blacksmith right um uh, and a very, a very sh- sh- small sliver of of male society will consume those Well, because those they're shows. not interested in 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 welding or in ironmongering or, in, <laughs> of course, I'm not either. I don't watch that channel. Exactly. But this is exactly my point. But I do watch football, American football, and I love it. Yeah. yeah. I watch American basketball, baseball. I watch soccer. I watch. You know, I, for example, I know I women in boxing. I love watching boxing. I know more. Wi- I know <laughs> more. I know more women that enjoy football than yeah. men that enjoy football. You're speaking of soccer now. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Soccer. But you know, I enjoy boxing. If I'm if I'm channel surfing and it's, I always stop for at least ten minutes to watch the to see how the boxing match is going. <laughs> the bridge has made a brilliant, um, <laughs> brilliant comment here. Two men discussing women's taste. Yeah. Let's keep it to men. Let's keep it to men. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, it's, I think when you, when you talk about romance novels, I think there's a very narrow slither, um, there just like it's with, the number one, uh, genre of literature for women. Um, <laughs> I, I would, I, I would say no, the number one selling book is the Bible. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. But we're talking. And it has been for many, many years. <laughs> All right. And, and, and again, and, and cross, um, uh, cross, uh cross gender lines let's say uh-huh. um so yeah i i think um i i think as as um as we're evolving as a society well let's i'd like to get your take on this right i'd like to i'd like to know like how is the meaning of for you how is the meaning of masculinity changed over time like i expressed from when i was when i was a young man um my grandfather's kind of idea of what masculinity was and that was me through a child, um, from childhood to to adolescence, kind of consuming that. My grandfather was very much a man's man, um, yeah. in that traditional sense. He he, he worked with his hands. He spoke a, a ton yeah. of languages. He was a great father and grandfather. He he, he built he, he built an extension mm-hmm. on the on the back of our house. I mean, he was um, 
his values are very much oriented in the family. And then that changed for me again as I moved into adolescence and I had my behavioral problems and my drinking problems. And um, because my identity as a man was very much linked to those things and then changed once more when I went to university and, and engaged in more intellectual pursuits. Um, again, my perception of what it meant to be a man because I was surrounded by different kinds of different versions of masculinity yeah. um, but people that i admired were at that point tutors lecturers or intellectuals in the field that yeah. i was studying so that's how masculinity changed for me kind of in my progress to, to become the person that i am today can you speak to that is there anything like how was the, the meaning of masculinity changed well i'm a you? different generation first of all I which grew makes up, it fascinating first of all i grew up in texas texas we're cowboys we're tough guys mm. all right uh second um i was the best in sports in my school mm. i was the fastest runner i could jump higher than anybody I played American football, I played basketball, baseball, track and field, I played golf. And uh, that develops masculinity more than the feminine element, mm. of course. So would you say for you, like, um, athletic? So there's something about that athletic kind of... I, I, the, I am a product... But the, what I am today mm. is a product more of sports than of academia. Yeah. And I think even of my parents... Of, or my milieu, my surroundings, my environment. All right. I'm, I'm a product of, of, because sports, you know, you, you have to work hard and there's a certain degree of sacrifice if you want to be good. Yeah. You, know, you have to work at it. And then you win or you lose. You learn how to lose, but you learn how to win and to, you know. And so, but that type of focus and drive is something that later has helped me in, in everything I've done, you know, be yeah. focused and drive and hard work and reach your goals. And in sports is, is a better preparation for that than academia is mm. for real life. If you're going to be entrepreneurial or similar, yeah, yeah, you see, and the masculine element I think is, is part of that, even though there are a lot of very successful women yeah, yeah. entrepreneurs. Did yeah. it, did it, but has that perception changed over time or is that something that's no. persisted? First of all, I don't stop to think about these things too much. I'm much simpler than you. I don't, <laughs> I don't get, I'm, I'm, I've never I'm, been called complicated before. I mean, I'm, I'm black and white and I have, <laughs> I have little patience for people who like to dance in the gray. Yeah. yeah. You understand? Oh, wow. I live in the gray. I, I know, <laughs> but you, you live in the gray. <laughs> You know. Okay, so here's another here's another question. Like, there are certain things like we we touched on emotional stoicism, right? That is uh, certainly in my grandfather's case. He was a man that didn't express his his feelings. Well, excuse me, stoicism is not necessarily not expressing your feelings and things. Stoic emotional stoicism. St okay, but stoicism is. I know what stoicism is. I've read things Marcus you can't Aurelian. change. You don't worry about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the government. It'll be socialist four years and conservative four years, etc. It. As long as they don't raise taxes 50%, yeah. you know, I just don't pay attention to it. It's not... Okay, if you prefer the term, term emotional suppressing, you know, suppressing a certain uh, amount of suppressing... I read a... I, I, you, I, you've lost me. But yeah. what are you Well, getting? let me go back to emotional stoicism, right? All right. Um, it's often expected, or at least I felt as a child, it was expected of a man to be in the, a, a dominance over their emotions to a point of of, yeah. of kind of suppressing the more big boys of. don't cry exactly <laughs> and i would consider that um a harmful thing for we men well you know there's an expression in spanish mas vale pecar por exceso que por defecto which means better to go too far in one direction than not far enough yeah, you know yeah. better to go too far than not far and far enough and uh, for for Boys and men, I think they need to, they need to be strong. Yes, the world needs people who are strong. And But does know, strong necessarily mean kind of not talking about our feelings? Not allowing your emotions to take control of you. I mean, here's a, here's a fact, Richard. Here's an absolute fact. Three times as many men will die from suicide than women. Well, uh, let's not get into statistics because we have to do a, a check on that. Um, yeah. I can pass you a link yeah. right now if you want. Well, this, is from, um, uh, this is from... But the okay, mental I believe you then. Forum. All right, fine. I believe you then. But we're, we're less likely to visit the doctors, and I know that from myself. Even I don't like. But to visit was that the, the same sixty years ago when there was more apparent masculinity? You'd have to check. Yeah. You know, now that boys are being taught to 
to be emotional and to et cetera, I, that maybe that maybe that has something to do with the rise in the suicide rate among men. Or no, no, no. That was uh, that has that has been a persistent thing. You have to the go ages. back to you know go back to the 19th century, then to the early 20th century, the post-war. Mm. Period. I don't think more men. Are, uh, I don't think like more men are committing suicide now than in the past. If anything, it's probably reducing now. I can't speak to that because I don't. We're have speculating. Facts. I'm speculating about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but that that figure comes from 2014. Right, right, so that we're talking about nearly ten years ago, okay. Right. Um, and what I find what I find fascinating, because, by the way, if you're if you're a new listener and you're you download my podcast, um, Richard's um, an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, um, um, a media personality, very successful man, and a person I go to for advice quite often. I'm an English teacher first. Well, okay. an English teacher first, <laughs> yes. but all the all the rest is true. And an okay. author, and a, and, right. a, and a person that I go to when I need advice, which is why I enjoy talking to him about this kind of issue. Um, so yeah, emotional suppression. Like I, I, I think my life would have been markedly better. Suppression's not the right word. It is emotional right control, word. control of your emotions, not suppression. I mean, suppress means out, out. Yeah, yeah. I feel sad. I feel angry. Out. No, 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 no. It's, it's. You are Lord and master of your of your emotions. That you control them. You don't let them control you. You know, you are in control. You're master of your destiny. <laughs> that sounds very esoteric. <laughs> yeah. But but it in in fact it is. You're the master of your your if you if you can master your emotions, you're halfway to mastering your destiny. Mm. But if you can't master your emotions, if they take control of you, mm. you know. I've known you, for example, 20 years. I've known Fitz around the same. I've never spoken to Fitz about my feelings. He's never spoken to me about his feelings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kyle the same. Well, why do like, you speak to me? Um, but I don't really speak. I ask you for advice, but I don't speak about my feelings. Yeah. I don't think... I think there's a there's there's a real disconnect between... Um, between discussing discussing kind of well, men, events, men don't discuss their feelings among each other, and that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you go to a that is emotional. Suppression. You go to a public bathroom for women, mm. and there are ten women in there j chat, jabber, chattering. Yeah, yeah. You go to the men's, there are ten, and not a single word is said. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it's it's just this way that men are not communicative <laughs> in this way. But why not? Because that's the way we've been since the dawn of civilization I and think, before <laughs> I, I think so much about what we think about masculinity as is just invented i think it's just a construct i honestly do <laughs> i don't know i've, I've never th thought about the term masculinity yeah, yeah i'm just being a guy being i mean a man i mean think about like like for, for example i like it was very much impressed on me as a kid that a man is is a hard worker you know what I mean? To be a man is to get your hands dirty. You've probably heard that expression before, mm -hmm. right? That was one of my grandfather's like. That was definitely something that I, I picked up from him, that work ethic that I have. And quite often in my life, I've neglected things like friends, family, in the pursuit of 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 a career, you know? Well, for me, it's simply a question of personal responsibility. You That's know? no responsibility. And that leads you to be a hard worker usually. You know, if you, mm -hmm. you're responsible for your own good and try to be responsible for others as well if if it's necessary yeah and then uh, you just naturally are led into the types of attitudes that are typical of humans not only men but as women as well who mm. assume responsibility for their own actions and and so it's uh that, that's that's the number one thing for a man to teach somebody you've got to be tough you you don't never cry get your hands dirty okay that's radicalizing it too much yeah. but it's in the right direction but that's going too radical yeah yeah all right yeah yeah i mean my grandfather for example um i mean now he w he wouldn't recognize when like ne n n my grandfather would be proud of the person i am but wouldn't necessarily understand it but in his say, framework. Get, get out of the gray area no, no. <laughs> the gray area the gray area is where it's at okay let's take a quick look um at what people are saying in the chat you can be strong and express your feelings i agree with that that's from nessa Vanessa. and i think very much like we've been made to believe that being the being in control of our feelings but you quite rightly said being in control is different to suppressing but we don't talk about our feelings i think as much as we should 
And I think I well, think there men, is great strength in it's that. It's not in our genetic code to talk about our feelings. I don't think our the, our, the in, way in, we communicate is in a genetic. In a heterosexual male, they don't. I mean, you may find a few exceptions, which always prove the rule. But uh, I mean, look, I I didn't. Um, it was six years ago, seven years ago, when Marissa and Josh passed away, right? Mm -hmm. At that point in time, I went through this mental health crisis. I believed I had cancer. The doctor actually offered me um, to go to therapy, and I refused. And I, th I consider <laughs> that probably one of the a, a really stupid mistake of mine. And why? Because deep down in my lizard brain, I thought, well, no, that's not what a man does. I'm colder than you. I'm a colder person. And could and be. You no, know, I am. I mean, when... when when Marissa died, by the way, legend Marissa was a very important person in this company yeah, yeah. and in Baogan Town. You're really, really important, loved by everybody. I, I'm colder than you. You know, mm. you you take things, you allow things to get under your skin. Yeah, yeah. I don't. And that's something my granddad wouldn't have approved of, for example. All right. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we'll be back with this discussion in just four minutes, guys. Thank you. I'll see you in a second. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind the scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P R O B O H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're joining me live with Richard Vaughn, currently 9 a.m. Central European time. How are you doing out there? Okay, um, let's um, let's look through some um, let's look through some comments out here. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> some great ones. Um, uh, to, uh, yeah, we read that one. You can be very strong and express your feelings. I think that's where we left off. The bridge says not just in reference to feelings. I make a joke quite often. Like the best way to deal with a, a difficult emotion is to bury it way deep down in the fire, where it never comes out. That's suppress, and I don't agree with suppressing <laughs> your emotions. But it's funny, you know why it's funny? Because it's a thing that actually happens among men. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not a psychologist, nor do I want to be a psychologist, and I don't worry. I'm too self, I, I'm, I'm too self-centered. <laughs> you know, I enjoy me. You say, oh, and uh, I'm, I'm what, what you call an ethical, ethical egoist. Yeah. I mean, I believe in ethical egoism. You see, which means make, be hap try to gain your own happiness first. And then you're in a position to vibrate happiness around you. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So if you if you are suffering dramas, you're going you're you're going to send out negative vibrations. However, if you're happy, you're going to send out mm -hmm. positive vibrations. So you will help people more but you have to be happy yourself. So you first and then the rest. Then you're positioned to emanate, emanate mm. positive vibrations. Yeah, I mean, I agree to that to an extent. I mean, I, but, you know, I think I, I, you know, again, you know, I'm a socialist until it comes time <laughs> to pay my taxes, you know. Um, but, you know, I believe that a happy community makes, or, uh, you know, what's good for the, the, for the many ends up being good for you you know whereas i'm not kind of whereas i agree with you to a certain extent what we were talking before about um about charity and whatnot well if you want your porch to be if you want all the porches to insert for example if you want all the porches to be clean you teach people to clean their own porches and you don't send around a porch cleaning machine <laughs> yeah. you know to the community and so, okay let's continue on with um with these um where were we uh, I don't believe anyone is master of their emotions all the time. Um, well, of that course was from Nessa. Of course not. Um, Rob, it would be interesting to hear Richard on your previous unpopular opinion. I can't even remember what that was. That was 24 hours ago, Rich. You had an <laughs> unpopular opinion yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I have one every day. <laughs> um, Nessa, one thing is to talk about feelings with others, and another is to express how you feel. And that's, yeah, I think, I, I think Nessa has hit it on the head there. I think we're not very good at expressing how we feel. We're very kind of situational in the way. We, well, sometimes we in ourselves. social in social situations, you need to keep, st keep your mouth shut. Mm. I mean, what they call a white lie, you know, mentira piadosa. I mean, we we will lie to somebody, a white lie. 
Yeah. Oh, you look wonderful. Well, yeah, and they don't. <laughs> yeah. But you don't want to hurt their feelings in that given moment, you yeah. see. Or, well, I've, this is something we've spoken about quite a lot, is he? Um, would you prefer a brutal honesty or um, or a kind or a kind lie, a white lie? A white lie. I would yeah, a, a white kind, lie. Of yeah. course. Because we live in a society, right? Yeah, we have to live together. And there are certain societal... Um, uh, there are certain societal norms or certain societal kind of obligations we have. Well, necessary, in my yeah. opinion, yeah. Okay, let's continue. Ur says, I wouldn't miss the chance to say hello to Mr. Richard Vaughan. It's been a life changer for me. I started to study English three years ago. I did the whole 585 lessons of Vaughan 4.0. Thank Oy. you from that, the bottom you know, of my heart. In this case, you say, Te compadre un sentimiento, which means my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's a good one from Lude Hamster. Hamster. Society goes, goes through this all the time. Pseudo-intellectuals believe they're smarter than what history has tried to teach us. The pendulum is always swinging. That's something I can agree with. That's, it is. It's yeah, swinging. Yeah. With the current woke uh, rage, well, the pendulum will come back. You know, it's interesting. Again, when you, see, when you say woke rage, you're referring mm -hmm. to a very, very small vocal. Wow, but it's vocal. making an incredible impact. Now in the United, you know, it you, might be, but it's become a talking point for the right. You know, the, but, but I mean, left, but, people on the left, Richard, don't say, "I don't walk around saying I'm woke." Of course, they but, just they just believe what Bud they believe. Bud Light has lost twenty six percent of its sales in one month, and you know what? Bud <laughs> Bud will do something to win those people. Back. I know. All they well, you want, know, you know what I mean? Well, the word reactionary. It's interesting, reactionario. Yeah. When you say reactionary, people think of far right. Yeah, yeah. But it comes from the verb to react. Yeah. yeah. Which means there's always a reaction when things go too radical in one direction or the other. Yeah. It, and so there's always, it creates a reaction. And so they always go too far to the left, too far to the right, and then there's a reaction. And that's the pendulum. pendulum. Mm. The problem is that sometimes the pendulum goes too far in one direction and the reaction becomes, becomes violent. Mm. Okay, let's continue. Um, if I may interject, this is from Pedro. Usually, it has some some great uh, thoughts on the show. If I may interject, maybe the main issue here is the question itself. I believe being a man means whatever it takes for a guy to be happy. Love yourself, says Ah. Yeah, I will. We will come to this with Richard on a, on a future program bridge. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, for the guy to be happy, but also to emanate uh, the positive vibrations and to be responsible if that person uh, needs to also take care of others. Um, he continues, um, in, in a sort of quintessential modal, mode of a man, I aspire to be. I got married, I had children, became a general counsel of a multinational company. I provide, um, I, I swam across the Gibraltar Strait and no so shit. on. Yeah, yeah, he's an <laughs> impressive dude, man. Um, and that's okay for me. But for my brother, for instance, who is a gay man, I hope he pursues a completely different model. Um, otherwise, he would be extremely unhappy. And in it, he's a happy man, I know. Well, that's something of genetics. I mean, you can't control your genes. I mean, you can... If you're born with a certain genetic makeup, yeah. you will most likely, it's probably best not to rebel against it radically because you won't be happy. So here's my point. So the, we're coming back to this point where that I made right at the top of the show. But I think... What it means to be a man, right, is such a nebulous term. It's so subjective that it must mean nothing at all. And it is well, just the about same with the What individual. does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be a cat? Well, a dog? neither of us are women, <laughs> cats, or dogs, so we can't speak to that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, but you're, all you're saying is stands, uh, but everything you're saying stands for people in general, and that's my point. That was from Nessa for Nessa. Exactly. So kind of what what I find fascinating about this subject is 20 years ago, you would have asked, you ask your average person on the street, what does it mean to be a man? And they would have given you a pretty stock answer. And I think like? um, 20 years ago, so we would have been in the 90s. Yeah. Um, probably something in the, in the area of, you know, being, uh, coming right out of the 80s action movie era, being tough, being... Um, uh, you know, being All right. uh, somewhat, um, uh, somewhat uh, 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 to provide stability, like Marty McFly. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then go back even right. further than that, John you know, Wayne. Yeah, John <laughs> John Wayne. Yeah, again that that toughness. Yes. I think you know. I think um, uh, I think the the way we kind of we view gender now is a lot more healthy. I don't know Liam Neeson. 
you know, go, going to Paris and killing half the city to, to recover his daughter. <laughs> All of these vengeance movies, yeah. you know, revenge movies and things are very, very popular. People, people, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, even, they adore even, Liam Neeson. Yeah. They more the Liam, the well, the Australian guy, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. They are the the mm. they they the most popular actors are often the most masculine. No, come on. I mean, hey, no, no, no. Uh, no. I mean, like the uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Although he's done quite some uh, <laughs> quite some masculine roles, I wouldn't say so. Ten most popular actors today. Okay, yeah, go. Let's go. actors. Today. All right, let's see what list they give us. The most popular contemporary actors in America. Okay, in America. Mm. Let's see. Morgan Freeman. No, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Michael right. J. Fox. Michael J. Fox? You know, he was tough with Marty McFly. Come he on, was, ah, come on Richard. This is not. <laughs> Don't on. you remember? He said. <laughs> Don't, Don't call, call me, me a chicken. chicken. <laughs> but he's not known as an action Denzel star. Denzel Washington. Denzel is an actor's actor. But wait a minute. In his He has movie. done some action movies, but and I wouldn't And he's done some revenge movies recently. Yeah, yeah. Killing all the Russian bad guys the in equalizer. Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't consider him an action Bruce star. Bruce Willis. Okay, there you go. <laughs> he, I would consider him the first action star in that list. The, <laughs> number five, Danny DeVito. But number six is Keanu Reeves in his... Recent Mr. Wick, yeah, or what is it? John, John Wick. Wick? Come on, Samuel L. Jackson. Come on, most of these guys. If you'd have seen this list in the 80s, I think the top would have been uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Do you know what I mean? This, it, what you've actually done is a great example here of, of that change in view of what it means to be a man. And I, and, and I insist, like, it means, I think nowadays, and quite rightly so, it shifted to the point, the, the lines have blurred to the point where um where me, being a man really just you could you could answer the question or you should be able to answer the question exactly in the same way as a woman might answer what does it mean to be a woman strong because what does it mean to be a person a decent person on the planet i think this cr cross across gender lines across it's just the same strength of character mm. integrity and responsibility mm. and i think that it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or a, a zombie if you've got that Mm. You're you're positive in things. Uh, women are attracted to men who are masculine. They're, they they want to be swept off their feet. I think uh, that's again. I think that's a, you could say the same about you could say the same. Like I, I I what would be considered masculine traits traditionally. I am I find attractive in women. You know a certain amount of assertiveness, um, a strong, a very strong work ethic. I mean, nowadays those aren't considered fem uh, masculine traits; they're just considered positive traits. I don't right? find them unattractive. I mean, we work with a lot of women here. I think the majority of the employees in this company are female, and they're very good. But uh, I, I, I'm attracted more to the more feminine t styles, the types, the Marilyn Monroe types, you know, that are more. Okay, um, let's um, uh, let's see what people are saying here. Uh, JC says Tom Holland, very popular actor as well. Yeah. Not on Richard's list there, though. Well, I only did the first eight. <laughs> um, we need Tom Holland is a British actor. He Th is. These are in the United States. Yeah. He, he's relatively unknown. No, Tom Holland. He's Spider-Man. Come on. Okay. <laughs> uh, the bridge. We need a soft side. Um, Nessa. What it is to be a woman having children, being successful as a working woman, etc. I'm none of that. I am not. A, am I not a woman? You are. Of course, you are, Nessa. Um, it's not about gender. It's about being a good person. Yeah, I can um, echo that. It depends on the the woman, Richard. He. Um, she continues. Let's see. There are more comments. I'm not keeping up, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, let me see. Um. My point is that I pursue a model of being a man that makes me happy, and the problem is having a definition of what being a man should be. That might create a mismatch. Yeah, I think a lot of the a lot of the injustice in society, especially around the LGBTQ community, um, if you want to go back to um, before the rise in in feminism, has been kind of like it has been because of a definition of of what what being a man. Well, not because, but certainly one of the contributing factors was what it is to be a man. And I think the erosion of that idea, those blurred lines that we see today, actually opened the doors to, to not, not only a lot more freedom of expression for, for marginalized communities, 
Um, but even for, 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 for guys in general. I'd be interested to look at those uh, suicide statistics now and see if well, they're I any lower. For the next program or the program with Andrea, mm. you should go into, well, what are the women's dream? What, what are their dreams? What do they, uh, what do they desire in life? Mm. See, but surveys yeah, yeah. You know, that are correct, cross, good cross sections of women and to see what they are, what they are. Why they are unhappy, what they are missing, and things. And there is probably about, there is probably data on that even now. Let's I see, mean, I meant just this last week, two different women told me I can't. There, there aren't any men, interesting men anymore. One of them, you know, I'll tell you after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after the program, <laughs> she said there are not any interesting men anymore. I said, I said, you know, you know, you should get married. You, you, you'd be a fantastic mother. And she said, yeah, I know, but I there's can't find the right man. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's quite anecdotal. But I, I think if you ask many men, they'd say the same thing about it, maybe. The, and I don't think that has very much to do with. Um, I don't think that has very much to do with the opposite sex. My case. I mean, if if bigamy existed and I were a multimillionaire, I would probably have fifty wives. <laughs> I mean, I've met so many women that I would be willing to marry, and I love my wife. <laughs> you understand? Here's, um, here's a comment by, <laughs> by Lude Hamster that I find quite interesting. I know it's anecdotal, but every long marriage I know, the man is traditional and doesn't express their feelings a lot. You mean successful marriages? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, yes. I think that's the point he's making. Yeah. Um, uh, the bridge says, Rob, you need a feminine multitasking tasking trait or you need more hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Nessa says a happy life. I can't remember what that was. I can't immediately remember what that's in reference to richard we could do a survey of two men instead well, you, you're listening to one right now guys <laughs> two men yeah very different by the way um yeah <laughs> which makes this an interesting because i mean obviously we're from very different generations what would be interesting is to have someone like i have this love affair with generation z i think Gen i think z. yeah All right i think they're um i think i think they are what um uh, what the millennials would have liked to have been snowflakes <laughs> no 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 all right like we consider we consider i think we consider the idea of a snowflake being someone who is carried away and outraged by their emotions right or a pusillanimous person you know somebody uh, someone too sensitive yeah okay. hyper hyper sensitive um and easily offended yeah okay i i wouldn't say that's the case with generation z whatsoever much more than with previous generations i think <laughs> i think if anything you could maybe characterize generation z with a little bit of apathy but i think they've earned that i mean they're, cu they're currently studying for jobs that won't exist in 20 years their um uh, their university degrees don't really mean anything they're going to um uh, they're going to work for um uh, to earn money that is increasingly lacking in value I think they've earned their apathy. And I think if any generation is going to change the world as we know it, it'll be them. Every generation has had challenges and problems. My father's generation, they had, my father grew up and my mother through the mm. Great Depression and then the Second World War. Mm. I mean, from 1930 to 1945, 15 years of their life was just taken away yeah, yeah. from them. And then in... In my generation, it was the counterculture and playing with drugs and things in, in Vietnam War. Mm. You know, 15,000 people were killed in the Vietnam War. And we were in and the nuclear threat. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. The, the Cold, Cold War. War. I mean, we had to do air raids. We had to get under our desk, mm. you know, once a month to practice for air raids and things. And then my the subsequent generations, every generation has challenges and problems. You know, it's it's true today and it was true fifty years ago that only five percent of startup companies survive the first five years. Mm. Which means there are in the current gen Gen Z generation and my generation, your generation, that five percent is always there who are going to succeed. Yeah. yeah. And create, you know, generate wealth, wealth. and gen generate activity. And things so, the, this generation will come around. Every generation. I know that. I think they. I, I think that the the way they are right now shows real promise. I mean, come around. Yeah. Come, I mean, I mean, I mean looks at the the nature of the fabric of society has changed so much, and it is such a fluid thing. Um, uh, I think you know every generation says, but they say things were better in the old days. Yeah. I mean, my grandfather used to say that. It was, uh, you know, I mean, he 
He, he was born in the tail end of the Spanish flu after a world war and then escaped his country of birth during the Second World War. And he's still, yeah. <laughs> like in the 90s, he said, oh, things were better. Well, back every then. generation thinks the subsequent generation is crazy or irresponsible yeah. and things. It's just, I'm, I'm sure if you go back to Roman times, these young people, <laughs> these young people don't understand responsibility. <laughs> um, Pedro has a great point here. He says, even though the definition of man is becoming fluid, if you survey women what kind of man they pursue as a partner, I'm pretty sure they would look for a quintessential model of a man. What does he mean by quintessential model? You know, um, I would imagine Pedro. Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I would imagine Pedro um, is referring to the model of the man he represents. You know, quite athletically fit, a good provider, great job. Yeah, things like that. Um, uh, the pe- um, j- the bridge says maybe Gen Z is teaching balance or is reaching balance. Yeah, I would agree with that statement, um, Bridge. Um, well, Nessa, with, with artificial intelligence now. I, I'm going to postpone my. I'm going to see <laughs> the impact of AI. Yeah, yeah. on society. Yeah. It's going to be. Ca- yeah, it's going to be. Maybe in yeah. five years we can have a better conversation on Gen Z. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is that, this is a whole other conversation that we should have one day, like projecting ourselves into the future. You know, using or at least kind of imagining a, um, a set of circumstances post. In a, in a post know, AGI world, it could be. But you know, if we th- we're in 2023, if in 1973 we had had a conversation and and extrapolated into 50 years ahead, mm. it would have been much more advanced than we are now. Mm. I mean, we would have flying cars. We yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're know. not in some ways, Richard, but no one would have imagined having a little square. Uh, or oblong um, uh, shape in your in your back pocket that contained all the world's knowledge. Yeah, I know, but we, mobile <laughs> I mean, telephony, yes, we would have guessed that, but not exactly. the internet, not cyberspace. Yeah, not um, uh, art, not uh, like artificial intelligence at our fingertips. There's so so many things where we have advanced quite so, so much, and the data says. I mean, the data says that things are getting better. Well, I think we tend to have this negative. Of course, everything's getting yeah. better. We have this negative bias, right, towards yeah. towards things. The media doesn't help because it has a massive negative bias because that's what attracts people's attention, right? Well, they have to sell newspapers. They need headlines. Mm. I mean, they're not going to say, you know, today was the same as yesterday. Everybody went to work and uh, very few people died, you know? Um, Nessa says, you're too protective of them, Rob, and that's what got them here. I think maybe she's in referencing Gen Z there. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, could be, but I'll tell you what, I, through my Helico- time... With- helicopter parents have created kids who are hypersensitive and and not, they, they're not strong, many. Um, okay, I mean, what's strength? I mean, we're coming back to this, this Ooh. idea of, um, again, going back to that idea, I guess, of, of masculinity. Because no, I think my masculinity grandfather... and strength are not the same. No, 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 no. Let me, let me frame it in the, in the, going back to our original topic, right? I think my grandfather would have said um, strength is strength is um, uh, is confronting being, the day to day obstacles of life and and overcoming them where you can. Yeah, you know? and and I wouldn't consider Gen Z um, lacking in strength, but um, having an overabundance of uh, of um, of an awareness of the society in which they live. I think they have an awareness of the society in which they live. Well, then they're blaming society for th- for their lackings or... No, look, they didn't create the world that... Um, well, neither did I, neither did you, no, no, nor no. my parents. My parents didn't create the world they lived in. They, no, no, no. My father had to fly 33 missions over Germany, <laughs> and he survived, fine. Mm. He didn't create that world. He didn't... He was in the he's in Texas. He said, "Why do I have to go to Europe? They've been fighting each other for two thousand years. Why do I have to go there and risk my life to pull, you know, to save their their asses? Yeah. You know, so he didn't want to come to Europe and fly missions over Germany. Mm. You know, so I mean, we 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 all inherit when we're born a world as it is, and so mm. you know, to complain about the world, my God, I'm sorry, adapt to it. I mean, Darwin is the survival of the fittest, which means La supervivencia del más capacitado para adaptarse al entorno. You have to adapt to your environment. And that's strength. The ability to adapt successfully to your environment. 
I think, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider like Gen Z's <clears throat> apathy not adapting to the environment that they're in. Do you know what I mean? Again, going right back to that, um, that idea of of um, what it meant to be a man to my to my um, my touchstone of that when I was a kid, which was my grandfather. Um, the idea of of overworking was was seen as something that was was you know was laudable. You work twelve hours today. Good well, for you. That's not laudable. Well, you well you had to work twelve hours in some cases because the family needed, you know, or the yeah. or the the mine or the factory demanded it. Yeah. I mean, going back to the nineteenth century. Lute Hamster says, "Yes, it's getting better, and that's the issue. Human nature will keep pushing utopia until it all breaks down." Woof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite. A... Well, we'll never reach utopia. Yeah, no, but, I don't you know, think so. I hope, think human I hope nature. We don't reach it. I think yeah. human nature wouldn't survive utopia i think we need <laughs> we need we need something to fight against of course you know? yeah you have to, obstacles it strengthens you i mean you have you have to overcome obstacles i mean why do pro, i mean in in my book i ask a very stupid question but very relevant why do problems exist why do we have problems you know, constant problems people problems object problems you just mm. we have problems i mean the, the most common pro, probably the most common noun is problem I and mean, we say problem 500 times more than we say table yeah you know? <laughs> because you know why do they exist it's it it, it sharpens us and keeps us alive mm. otherwise we would not be alert yeah purpose <laughs> a sense of purpose no a sense of survival <laughs> <laughs> then you can have purpose yeah look i mean <laughs> i don't think i mean in in today's age survival isn't an issue right I mean, not okay. for us. Not for us in the in the West, at least. I mean, if we're talking about like in the first world, now in the first world, exactly. So, if anything, problems. Oh God, I didn't have time to share the Bukowski post. Um, look, if you go to my Patreon, I will post that um, poem, which is "Bluebird" by Charles Bukowski. Um, a man, um, a complicated man, um, a German American um, poet writer um, who wrote a, a, a really insightful poem of um, of him who was considered himself quite a masculine individual and um, and how he dealt with his more sensitive side. I'll share with that, that with you on my Patreon. So if you want to go there, um, it's Professional Bohemian on Patreon. Richard, thank you very much. Interesting discussion today. Welcome. We'll do this Pleasure. again one time. All right. Next time I'll ask, um, I'll ask everybody else what they want us to talk about. <laughs> All right, guys, um, uh, we're bumping up towards the end of the show, friends. Um, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Guys, so many things you could have been doing this morning. Instead of doing those things, you decided to take the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. See you next time. Bye.